from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. John J. Mute's illustrated picture books are beloved around the world and have been translated into more than 10 languages. A native of Ohio, he had his first one-man exhibition of paintings and drawings at the invitation of Wilmington College when he was 18. He studied stone sculpture in Japan. He has received many awards and an extensive critical acclaim. His book, Zen Shorts, was named a Caldecott Honor Book and spent 41 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. Mr. Muth lives in upstate New York with his wife and four children, where he spends time chasing the clouds from his brushes. Ladies and gentlemen, John J. Muth. Thank you. Can you all hear me here? It's okay. It's nice that you could all come out today. I really, I really appreciate it. And they gave me the kind of microphone that I don't have to yell, which is great, because my mom says that I talk really quiet. I kind of mumble, so this is good for me. Uh, I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio, and uh, I've been drawing as long as I can remember. My mother says I showed up with a pencil, so I, sorry, Mom. Um, so I didn't ever really feel like I had to pick being an artist. I just always drew, and I always drew things that I wanted to exist, maybe, that didn't exist. So it was a kind of a natural thing to start putting words with pictures and, and I've been doing that as long as I can remember. Um, I worked in Japan for a little while doing a comic strip about a uh, father and son and uh, so I was able to begin my sort of transition into doing things for children and when I came to the United States, I kind of came to the United States with the bound edition of the first year of this, this uh, serial and tried to get it to a, took it to a comic book publisher and I said, I, I wonder if you'd be interested in publishing this. And they said, well, this is really great. We really love this, but it's a children's book. So maybe you should take it to a children's book, you know, uh, publisher. And I, so I, I said, okay. And I, uh, I left and I took those, uh, that book to a children's book publisher. And they said, this is really great, but we don't really publish comics. So I said, uh, okay. So I kind of went home. And um, about a week later, I got a phone call from a friend, a person who's become a very good friend, uh, David Saylor. He's the art director at Scholastic. And he said, you know, I know you weren't really looking to do children's books, per se, but would you mind taking a look at this script we got as text? It's really, I think it's a neat story, and maybe you'll respond to it. And so uh, they sent it to me. I said, yeah, sure. And uh, they sent it to me, and I read it, and it was called Come on Rain. And when I read it, the f I just knew exactly what all the pictures looked like. So it was a very easy book to say yes to. It was beautifully written, and I was very honored to be offered that book. So that was my first book in children's books. And I said, this is kind of fun. So I started writing for all you old folks up here. And, um, and actually, by extension, uh, for myself, too, through you. Um, and I feel very at home in children's books, and I've got uh, two four-year-old twins that may be showing up at some point to, to steal the show, I don't know. But, um, so it's, it's a kind of an ongoing thing. Um, so when I started writing for children, I would go on tour and I'd visit schools where you might have been, right? And on the first book I wrote that, that I did myself, um, writing and illustrating, called The Three Questions. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, thank you very much. Um, that was from a story written by Leo Tolstoy. And I was very lucky to sort of sit on the shoulders of that giant for that book. Um, but when I was out visiting the schools, uh, I got the chance to see what kinds of questions you had about those books and what it was I was doing. And so I realized I wanted to actually have a kind of dialogue that was different. And as I was out wandering around with uh, my books and talking to, to, to you, I found out that, um, or I thought, what would it be like to live down the street from someone who is a kind of spiritual teacher? And, but not like uh, anyone I'd ever encountered before. You know, someone you would go over and have peanut butter and jelly with. And so I came up with this character, and his name is Stillwater. And he was, he was a panda. And I don't know why he's the one who showed up in my stories, but he is. 
and he lives next door, or down the street rather, from uh, three kids. One's name is Carl, and the other one's name is Addie, and the oldest boy's name is Michael. And these are all based on people that I know. The oldest girl, Addie, is actually based on my daughter Adeline. And the, uh, the, the, old bo the older boy, Nick, uh, Michael, is based on my son Nikolai, who makes his first appearance in The Three Questions. And um, Carl is based on my nephew Carl. And I swear, uh, if you've read these books or know these, these characters at all, I haven't made anything up. <laughs> it's true. So in the first book, we got to introduce these characters to each other. Stillwater met Addie, Michael, and Carl. And then in the second book, the, the four of them have an adventure together where they go and meet this older lady who needs a bit of help. Her name is Mrs. Whitaker, and, and they find out that maybe Mrs. Whitaker can actually help them. So that was kind of neat. That was fun. And in this one, um, Stillwater seems to be ready to tell them a ghost story. So I thought I'd read a little bit of this to you. Is that all right? Yeah? That's good? Okay. All right. Zen Ghosts. And I will announce some of the stuff that's in the imagery because you can't see it from where you are. But right here you see Stillwater is putting things into this uh, person, giant rabbit into their uh, Halloween basket. And it looks like he's got treats, and the treats include a, a, a carrot. So you would give a giant rabbit a carrot, right? Yeah, OK. Zen ghosts. Michael, there's a ghost outside, said Carl. A what? asked Michael. A big, scary-looking ghost, said Carl. Is it still water? asked Michael. I don't, I, it doesn't have Stillwater's face, said Carl. Oh, wait. Yes, he does. Come in. Hi, Stillwater. So St Stillwater's on the porch and he's got, he's bowing. And on the top of his head, he has a mask, a fox mask. Hi, Stillwater, said Addie. Happy almost Halloween. We're working on our costumes. I'm going to be a moon princess. What are you going to be? And Addie's coming down the steps. And Carl's welcoming Stillwater in. I am a ghost, said Stillwater. What are you going to be, he asked Michael and Carl. I'm going to be a monster, said Carl, with powerful atomic heat ray and, well, so with a powerful heat ray and atomic breath, I will cause awesome destruction. I haven't decided what I'm going to be, said Michael. Either an owl or a pirate. I like owls and I like pirates. Perhaps you will be an owl pirate, said Stillwater. He can't be an owl pirate, said Carl. There's no such thing as an owl pirate. He has to be one thing. He can be whatever he wants, said Addie. Look, Stillwater, do you like my costume? And you can see she's got this long flowing gown. And in it, there are these little shapes that look a little bit like maybe butterflies or moths. And you can see Carl's trying on parts of his costume. He's actually pretty ferocious. And he's got a, a monster, I think it's a mask. He's got a monster head and monster feet. And in this picture, Stillwater seems to be watching some shapes fluttering up into the air, sort of like the ones that were on but Addie's dress. Yes, said Stillwater. I like your dress. This is, this, it reminds me of something. This is a very special Halloween. There's going to be a full moon, and I know someone who will tell you a ghost story. Yay, said Addie. I love ghost stories, said Michael. It's not too scary, is it? Asked Carl. After trick-or-treating, meet me by the old stone wall, and I will take you to the storyteller, said Stillwater. And they all waved goodbye to him there. Now this is Halloween night, and I know you're not going to be able to see this very well, but there's all kinds of folks out on the street, and that's one of the things I love most about Halloween, is going out and finding just goblins and ghosts and all sorts of folks that are uh, trouncing around. We've got two folks dressed up as a unicorn, right? And um, there's a football player and a princess and a couple of pumpkins are running around, just, and a witch who seems to actually be flying, right? 
And there goes this super bunny or something, I don't know, and some ghosts, and there's the guy with the giant bunny suit, right? Yeah, and the nice thing about Halloween night, if you go in at nighttime, is you can't really tell, you know, are they real? I don't know. This guy's dressed as a bunch of grapes, and here's a mom carrying a small prisoner, and a, and a monkey who wants to be a cowboy, and we've got a fellow on stilts, or maybe not. So, when the children were done trick-or-treating, they waited by the stone wall. I'll trade you three tiny mints for one snookers, said Addie. No, said Carl, I'm not giving up my snookers. But you don't even like them, said Addie. Come on. I only like tiny mints if they're the crunch peppermint kind, said Carl. Besides, I'm saving my snookers. I have one flavored like bamboo, said Stillwater. Wow, you scared me, said Carl. How long have you been there? You can see Stillwater sort of appears up by the tree, right? Follow me, said Stillwater. I've never gone this way before, said Michael. Me neither, said Carl. I think I have, said Addie. And here we've got Stillwater's carrying a, a lantern. And fluttering around that lantern are a couple of the uh, shapes like that were on Addie's dress, right? Maybe like moths? You know how moths chase the, the light? In a few moments, they arrived in, at Stillwater's house. It's very misty, said Addie. Come in, said Stillwater. They all sat facing the front of the room. Then a panda, who looked exactly like Stillwater, came in and sat down. Is that Stillwater? whispered Carl. Yes. No. no. Shh, I don't know. Shh, quiet, whispered Michael. The panda held up a brush and said, I am going to draw you a story. So you can see he's sitting there and there's a candle. And he looks really calm, doesn't he? Once, a long time ago, there was a young girl named Senjo. Her parents loved her very much and they took very good care of her. And that's all I'm going to read to you. You have to see what happens. So I thought I would draw you something. Is that all right? We'll do that now, right? Now, when I'm painting, I, 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 I like to draw and paint in a lot of different ways. Uh, one of the ways is to, uh, one of the ways I like to get started in the morning before I begin my little drawings is to work very large. And I use big pieces of paper. Usually I put them on the floor. And I thought I would bring special brushes today to show you guys. And I, like I said, I like, to, I like to work really big. So I brought some of, the, some of the brushes. This brush is from Japan. And um, he's kind of a nice brush. He work, I, I like working with him. Uh, there's also, this is a brush that was a gift. And this handle is made of stone. It's made of jade. And, you know, my brushes are kind of like brothers and sisters. Sometimes I get along with them, and sometimes I don't. So it's good to bring several along. <laughs> but you would think this was a really heavy brush, but it's not. It's balanced just right. And just so you can have an introduction, we've also got this guy. And this has goat's hair, so he's very floppy. He's very soft. And all of these other, uh, these two brushes are from China. And um, so often I'll begin my day by doing large movements uh, with a brush and ink so that I get my whole body involved in drawing the pictures because it's a lot of fun. Even when you end up drawing little pictures, it's nice to have a sense that your whole self is in, involved in the picture. And that's one way to do it. So let me start with, um, I think we'll pick the medium sibling here. Give me a second so that we don't uh, splatter everyone. <laughs> It's a little messy.
Now there's only a few, I know none of you over there can see this, I apologize for that. But there's just a few lines. That's one of the things I like about this kind of brush is it doesn't take too many, too many lines to sort of have something show up. Now I, are you starting to see something? No, not yet? An eyeball. No, not an eyeball. You know what it is? Okay, let's see if I, if I can finish it up in enough time that you can, I won't lose you all, so. Okay. So one of the things I really like doing in the winter time is sled riding. So I was trying to imagine what it would be like if I were still water and I was going to go sled riding, I'm pretty sure he would need something, you know, a little bigger. So, there we go. He probably would need an inner tube to a really big truck. That's my thinking. <laughs> and sort of. So. <laughs> so, just uh, kind of. So you sort of get an idea of what's happening here. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Um, so what I thought I'd do now is maybe take some uh, questions. If anybody's got, yes, over here, yeah. Um, do you know what the, uh, what, where do you get the name Stillwater from? Where did I get the name, that's a great question. Where did I get the name Stillwater was, um, I, I came up with Stillwater because I'd done a picture of a panda wearing a very fat pair of pants. And I had no idea what it was about, but I thought it was, it made me laugh, so I put it in a drawer. And when I thought of that character, I wanted to know what kind of character would this be that I wanted to talk about? You know, who, what, who's the spiritual teacher I wanted to live down the street from? And I thought, he's probably a Zen teacher. And, um, and I started to think about what Zen teachers keep in mind and how they clarify things and how when you've got a puddle that is still, you can see reflections, right? But if the puddle's moving, you can't really see as well. Your mind is the same way. If, if your mind is still, you tend to be ready for what's coming. But if you're agitated and you're worried about what you did here and what you did there, it's harder. So still water seemed like a pretty good name for a Zen panda. Thank you. Thank you. What was your inspiration for Ku? <laughs> uh, Ku is uh, Stillwater's nephew, and he speaks only in haiku. Um, and he's in the second book. Uh, and he may come back. Uh, I am a very poor Zen student, and have been for a long time. So, uh, but I spend, <laughs> I spend a lot of time near, in a monastery that's uh, nearby, and uh, my family visits there. And, so, um, and yeah, Ku is just someone I wanted. I knew Stillwater had relatives. I just. He just showed up, so, in my drawings. Thanks for the question. Um, are you gonna make any more uh, series of uh, Zen things? Am I gonna make any more? Hmm. I don't have any plans. I know I wanna do Zen Snow, but after that I, I will have to sort of see. I okay, don't... thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the question. What does haiku mean? Ah, okay. What does haiku mean? Well, in Japan, there is a form of poetry. And it's very short, and it usually has 17 syllables, and it's called haiku. And I used the play on words in, in the second, in Zen Tais, and I had ku show up, and Stillwater says, haiku. And, uh, I get that. I beg your indulgence. <laughs> Um, um, so I thought that was a kind of a nice way for Ku to speak 
would be to use the idea of the 17 syllables. I was not very strict, but I was, uh, I tried to be at least uh, in the spirit of it. Do we have, yeah? Do you write all the time? Do I write? All? Actually, I don't. I don't, I, I write on, you know, little bits in different books of, I mean, drawing pads and stuff. But I don't write all the time, and I wish I did. I, I, my writing would get much better <laughs> if, if I did. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Well, I, I kind of think the books that are available for children um, that are age appropriate, there are some really wonderful contemplative kinds of books available. But I like all kinds. I like silly books, like Mo Willems' books are hilarious to me. And I think reading needs to be a whole feast of different things.